effort and vision. Our first story takes us to the beautiful Big Hole Valley between the Pioneer and Beaverhead Mountains in southwest Montana. There we'll meet a family that's called the valley home for five generations. The Big Hole Valley is famous for its sprawling ranches, its cold winters, and something else. The famous haystacks are made using a clever device invented near here in 1910. It's called a beaver slide, named for its slanted wood platform that mimics the trails left by beavers on riverbanks. These simple derricks have given ranch families a cheap and reliable way to store winter forage. The Hershey family has been in the Big Hole since 1893, when the first generation came west to homestead. They were uh, cheesemakers in Switzerland, my grandparents. And um, uh, they had milk cows and they made cheese and hauled it by wagon over to Gibbonsville and to Anaconda. To feed those milk cows, the Hershey's had to store tons of the valley's nutritious hay. The beaver slide makes the work quick, but requires lots of hands. Jill Elio, now 79, has been helping with the haying since she was six. The first summer I got 20 silver dollars. Well, there was a bank in Wisdom at the time, and I went down, I mean, I got a check, and I went down and got 20 silver dollars out of the bank. And I wish I still had them. <laughs> Years later, haying season brought her something money couldn't buy. When our kids were little, it was my vacation because I never ever got away from the house, and except in haying time. And uh, I couldn't hear anybody saying, Mom, you know, doing all this help. And, uh, but I just love it. I love the hayfield. I like the freedom and I like the independence. Jill's younger sister, Joyce, started in the hayfield at age four, delivering water to the men. Then we had a one-horse rake, and we'd, when we were about six, we'd start to rake with the one horse, and that horse knew more than we did. <laughs> She'd just go where we were supposed to go. <laughs> These days, it's a little more hectic in the hayfield. These buck rakes are custom-modified truck bodies, driven in reverse, backwards as forwards. The big steel tongs rake up the sun-dried hay and drive it to the beaver slide. They're tough rigs and reliable. For 48 years, I've driven the same buck rake. They, everything works, you know. The gears work, and the, well, everything with the brakes. I've never had any brakes, but that's all right. Not that anybody is slowing down. The object is to get the mowed hay to the area in front of the beaver slide and pushed onto the basket. Fire up the hoist and haul away. Over and over and over. Moving the cage forward to build a rectangular haystack that reaches nearly 30 feet tall and weighs about 20 tons. Just a couple of miles away at Jack Hershey's ranch, the wind is taking a little off the top as the crew sets up in a new hayfield. Fred Hershey, Jack's son, has come over from his ranch to lead the crew that's putting up his dad's hay. For decades, the big hole was a regular stop for migrant farmhands. Those seasoned workers don't show up anymore. It helps hard to find. That's, as you see, we just got a bunch of kids. I mean, kids. The oldest one, one there is a boy, that Jeremy, you know, and I think he's 22. So, and uh, the youngest one's nine. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's good. Toby Shepard from nearby Jackson is 12 and a bit short for his buck rate. Yeah, this buck rake uh, my dad built, and he was really tall. It's easy to steer, though, because it has power steering. But you can't look straight in any way. You can't see over the top of your load. Everyone admits there were a few close calls at the beginning of haying season, but today it's like a well-rehearsed line dance. Nothing slows haying except rain and breakdowns. Fred sends his daughter Murphy to fetch the mechanic, but he can't wait while his crew sits idle.
Nine sixteen. I don't think it goes like that. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Things are back up and running before the mechanic arrives. A uh, fuel pump. And I'm no mechanic. I'm far from a mechanic, but I fixed it. I was kind of proud of myself. Fred's father, Jack Hershey, says ranching takes a certain kind of people. His family's called this place home since 1943. Well, I don't know any difference. There must be. We don't know any difference. Sometimes not much profit in it. So you just got to like it is all. You do a lot of things you don't want, you don't think you shouldn't do, but you're going to have to do them to make these ranches work. With the sun sinking toward the Bitterroot Range and an evening storm blowing in, the last loads of the day go up. For Jack Hershey, it's the end of another day in his family's long history in this beautiful valley. We're pretty proud of it. Well, I've been here 100, over 100 years. There's not many ranches that has the same ground, owns the same ground for over 100 years. But Jack's son, Fred, knows that these are some of the last days of this long family tradition. He doubts he'd be here if he didn't have his family close at hand. I guess if we didn't, if I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't be. I mean, what would be the use? It's, I don't know, it's, it's not going to be as much fun when some of them are gone, you know. That's, that'll be the tough part. One person was on everyone's mind during haying season on the Hershey ranches. Dick Hershey, the youngest brother of Jack, Joyce, and Jill, was battling cancer in a Missoula hospital a fight he lost a couple of weeks after the last of the hay was stacked.